Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new Moldy Worm Gaming channel. Um, what you've just seen is actually my brand new intro. That is the one that we're going to be sticking with from now on. Moldy Worm Gaming channel has gone under a bit of a retro 80s appeal over the last couple of weeks. And that is all thanks to the course I'm actually studying at university. So you will have noticed that there's a new channel logo, obviously the new intro you've just seen, there's a new channel banner, and we also have a new outro which you'll see at the end of this video. Um, but we also have some new merch which is quite exciting, so um, if you want to check out the new merch with the new logo and the new style then definitely do that. There's a link in the description below to that and I've also gone ahead and updated the website as well with all the new um, the new logo and everything on so definitely check that out if you're interested but that's not why any of you are here today we're here to do a speed run another speed run in snow runner but this time we're going to be tackling the snow we're going to be going to Alaska and um, completing another speed run in a brand new vehicle today we're going to be checking out the tuz 166 and here it is it's a weird looking little truck um, i do quite like the look of it it's kind of um, very comical um, but there is some good upgrades i believe this is actually quite a good vehicle it's not the uh, the worst scout vehicle we have in the game if it's any better than the Don 71, then in my opinion, it will be a good scout vehicle. So as I always do, I have gone in and got the most important upgrades so we can fully customize this thing. So we'll do that first and then in a minute I will show you all the route that we are going to be taking. Okay, so in the custom shop, the engines, there is a couple of different options. Um, we have this stock one, we have the KR115, we have the KR120 AT which is what we're going to be putting in and we have the stock KR37 model 166. You can see the, uh, the 120 here gives us the best power to weight ratio and it does increase the durability to B+, plus. that's actually not too bad, that's pretty good. Uh, the gearbox, we have a couple of different gearboxes, so we have the stock gearbox, freeway gearbox, the snowrunner gearbox, which we're going to be putting in, and we have the archaic gearbox. Um, this only offers three gears, making up for the lack of gears is excellent fuel efficiency. Don't really care about that. Um, we're going to just go for the snowrunner gearbox, gives us high and low plus and minus, which is really nice. Um, tires, now we're going to be in the snow. I'm aware that mud tires are technically best in snow, but a lot of the driving we're going to be doing today is on the tarmac and um, that is covered in ice and the chain tires give us lots of grip on the ice. So I am going to be going for chain tires today. Um, I actually forgot to put the suspension on. I don't know why we skipped past the suspension. Anyway, we have the stock suspension, we have the ray suspension, which is what we're going to be putting on, and we have the tuned custom suspension, which I felt was a little bit too high. Um, I feel like that would make the truck a little bit more tippy, and if we're speed running, we don't want to tip over. So just gone for the raised it's uh, slightly higher than the stock so I felt that was good and now we can actually see the tires properly um, I'm gonna have to scroll all the way down to the chained tires again which are down at the very bottom it'd be nice if you could skip to each category but anyway uh, so now we can actually put the 35 inches on and we can actually get 39 inch tires on this thing if you have the tuned custom suspension which i don't um so we're going to go for the 35s i think that's good we're going to put the autonomous scout on so if we do roll over we can uh right ourselves um we can get a spare wheel on the back which 
yeah, I guess we'll just go for that. Um, we can go for a small roof rack. That's going to be quite good in case we do run low on fuel. Um, so, oops, we'll chuck that on there. Uh, let's go to the snorkel. We have the tall front facing or the short round cap. I think we'll go for the tall front facing today. Uh, in miscellaneous, we have a couple of different options. We have twin external horns there on the side. We have a single external horn. We have a searchlight. That's really cool. Um, we have the side pipe thresholds. I don't like those. Or we can get the angled sun visor with beacons. I quite like the searchlight. I think that's quite cool. The rest I'm not a fan of, so we won't bother with any of them. Rear bumpers, we have the double pipe, or we have the stock. Uh, the stock actually gives us a bit more ground clearance, so I'm going to leave the stock one on there. The front bumper, we have double pipe, which is obviously supposed to match the front. That looks quite cool. I like how the winch is sort of hooked around the front bull bar. That looks pretty cool. We have the slanted, which adds some more spotlights, fog lights on the front there. We've got tow loops, which obviously has the two tow loops down there. And we've got like an angled front bumper. And we have the stock front bumper. I like the double pipe, the first one we looked at. That's really cool. It looks very off-roady. Um, and it does give us quite good ground clearance so we'll leave that on there the rims only got two options we got these or these i don't like either of these but these are better the, these are the lesser of two evils so we're gonna go with those uh yeah i just want to clarify i don't like either of them uh rims but anyway uh, in the paint options we do have a special livery for this so you can get this um, it's like a joker uh, on the bonnet there it's called lucky and then it has like the um, card flames going up the side I don't even know how to describe this it's it's kind of cool if you're into this kind of thing um, it does make it more of like it's a jester that's that's what it is not a joker it's a jester I guess this vehicle is supposed to be like a jester or something um but yeah not a fan of that so i'm not going to go with that but we do have some two-tone options so let's have a look at those so we have um lime green and white which is similar to what we can get on the the yar um couldn't remember the name right there for a second we've got light blue and dark blue we've got brown and beige um uh, it does kind of suit the vehicle to be honest uh we have orange and black that's also what we can get on the yar i don't think that really works on this vehicle we've got white and i guess you'd call that maroon that actually does look quite good i'm, I'm not gonna go for it but it does look i think it's the best of the two-tone colors but i'm actually just gonna go full white today i'm gonna go um, just with a nice simple clean look I think that looks the best and we do have interior options but I showed those off uh, in one of the other videos they're nothing fancy um, I never use interior view anyway so I'm not gonna bother with that but that is the thing fully customized it does look much better now um, it looks a bit more like an off-road vehicle so before we continue into the actual speed run let's just have a look at the route we're going to be taking because it is different obviously to the michigan speed run today we're in alaska so currently we're in the white valley garage down here at the very um, most southern point of the map uh, we're going to be traveling along the main road all the way up to the Northport map which I have now opened the tunnel for that as well and then once we get into Northport um, we're not really visiting much of the Northport map it's going to be a very quick out of the White Valley tunnel along the road through the river and then to Mountain River 
And then in Mountain River, uh, we pop out of the Northport Gateway there at the very southern point of the map. Uh, we're going to be driving sort of along the top ridge road again on the tarmac to Pedro Bay. And Pedro Bay is going to be our final stop today. Pop out of the Mountain River Gateway there on the right. Then we're going to go over the frozen lake, follow the main road all the way to the service hub, which is going to be our final destination. We have to make it to the service hub. Now, as I did with the Michigan speed run initially, um, I've gone and set a benchmark time for us to try and beat. Now, for the Michigan speed run, it was 30 minutes. The um, Alaska speedrun, it's not shorter, it is shorter, um, but that is not the reason. It's a much easier speedrun, there's less time consumed um, in like a swamp or very difficult terrain. So the time to beat today is going to be 10 minutes. Um, I, I tested it very briefly in the Lodestar. Um, and I managed to do it in just over 10 minutes. So that is going to be the time to beat today. I feel quietly confident uh, that we can beat that today. I've never driven the Tuz. Um, we've never seen it here on the Let's Play yet. We've not seen it on the channel either. Um, so it's going to be interesting. It's a new vehicle to try out and a new speed run as well. Okay, so here we are outside. I've stopped the engine as we always do. Now, uh, if you've not seen one of these speed runs before, we've done two so far that have taken place in Michigan. Um, but basically, the way it works, we have to travel across all four of the Alaska maps in under 10 minutes. That's going to be the challenge today. Now, if we roll, we are allowed to use the winch. We've got the autonomous winch on here. If we get in a position where there is no winch points available we are allowed to go and get another truck to uh, sort of come and rescue us but obviously that's going to eat into our time um, so if we roll unless we can recover ourselves that is going to be sort of game over we're not allowed to use the recover button so we're not allowed to recover to the garage and start again we must go and get another truck um, if we run out of fuel, obviously that's going to be game over. We can go and get another truck to refuel us, but that is going to eat into our time. Um, we are allowed to use the fuel and supplies from the roof rack to repair and refuel our, ourselves. Um, we are allowed to stop at fuel stations as well, but obviously that is going to eat into our time as well. Um, so that's about the rule set you've all seen the map we've customized the vehicle anything else i think of um i will explain along the way but as soon as i start the engine here the timer underneath the dash cam is just going to be um the dash cam i meant to say face cam yeah underneath the face cam there will be a timer so you can see the progress we're going to be making i'm going to have a timer running uh, just next to me so i can commentate that is not going to be the accurate time you will all have the accurate time below okay so timer is ready i am ready let's start the engine and we will start the stopwatch so engine has started stopwatch is off and we are go for our first alaska speed run um i don't know how fast the little tuss uh tuss is here um i've like i said i've never driven this vehicle um so don't know what to expect with this thing i don't know that it's going to wander um, it seems to be okay at the moment uh, Maybe a little bit wandery. We've obviously got the chain tires on now the Roads in Alaska are very slippery and we're primarily Sticking to the road today. We're going to be mainly on tarmac. There is a little bit of off-road But it is mainly on tarmac the route we're going to be taking So I felt the chain tires is sort of the best option to go for uh, the other thing that I did forget to mention was uh, when we travel through the tunnels, the timer underneath the uh, face cam will pause. So um, basically, oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's go, 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 go. We do have permanent all wheel drive and diff lock, so that's not to worry about. But yeah, as I was saying, the timer will pause when we travel through the tunnels. 
Uh, that's basically because um, different consoles and different internet connections can lead to different load times. So um, the load times can vary from person to person and from speedrun to speedrun. So if you wanted to try this for yourself, then um, basically it's to keep it it's keep it as fair as possible because the load times can vary. So we decide to just pause the timer when we travel through the maps because technically that's not part of the speedrun. That's just loading into a game. So that time is not counted. If you wonder why the timer gets paused, then that is why. I don't know what progress we're making because my timer has turned off, which is typical. Um, I just have a timer going on my phone. Uh, it's literally just for commentary purposes um, because I won't know what time we're at until I edit the video, obviously. So you can all see the timer, but I don't have the timer under the face cam. So for commentary purposes, I have a timer going on my phone, but my phone is turned off, so I don't have a timer. So I don't know how fast we're going, um, but hopefully we're not doing too bad. As a guess, I'd say we're probably about 2 minutes 20 seconds. That's just a guess. Um, we're going to take a left up here. That is going to take us to the North Port map which is the very first map that you will travel to in Alaska and here it is so when we get to here there we go the timer should have disappeared that's the only way that I can pause it um, I've paused it on my iPad now and uh, we're gonna load into the next map so at the moment the timer will have just disappeared but once we load into the next map, as soon as I start the engine again, the timer should reappear and it will carry on counting. And I'm going to start my new timer and you should see now that the timer has reappeared at the time it was at and it will carry on counting. So it's a very quick little dash through the North Port map. Um, it's the best way I could link them up uh, like all of the maps because I wanted to travel to all of the maps in speedrun um, I'm planning on doing a speedrun in the Tamar region but I don't think we're going to be able to travel to all of the maps because uh, you can link the Drownlands, the Quarry and Zimnagos together but the Rift map um, is sort of on its own you can't really link it very well so we might be just traveling to three of the maps in there but if we can travel to all the maps i will try to do that for you we are able to travel to all the maps in uh, alaska uh, even though it is only a little dash through the north port map here so i believe the uh, the next tunnel is just up this road okay i think we're just approaching the tunnel there it is and pause the timer um on my timer over here we're at five minutes 30 seconds i think it will be slightly less uh for you um progress wise i don't really know how we're comparing to the load start at the moment it was only the, this morning when i did the test of this in the load start but I can't quite remember so anyway we're going to start the engine once again and start the stopwatch uh, I now have to remember uh, where we are going uh, okay yeah we're going straight on um, it's been a little while since I've been to the Alaska maps um, again it's quite a nice run through the um, uh, I can't even remember the name of this mountain river or something like that um, correct me on the name please um, I can't remember all of the the names and the commentary and the speed run and the adrenaline and everything mixed together um, has given me a bit of a brain block so I apologize um, but yeah it's quite a nice map to travel across not too difficult um, that is probably about the most difficult part right there um, it's nearly all on the road 
Um, fuel wise, I think we're going to do this all on one tank of fuel. This thing doesn't seem to be too thirsty. It has a 60 litre fuel tank, which is pretty good to be honest. Um, most of the scout vehicles have equivalent or smaller, but most of them have much more sort of fuel, uh, fuel consumption. Uh, much higher fuel consumption. This thing uh, sticks around sort of 4 litres a minute which is pretty low to be honest, that's pretty impressive. But there we go, we're on to our fourth map already, um, I need to pause my timer. We're up to 7 minutes on my timer, it'll probably be slightly less than that on yours. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously it's a much shorter speedrun, the, the actual length of the speedrun is shorter, but it's a lot nicer terrain, so that is why we're using last time. The timer has started, uh, sorry, the engine has started, the timer has started. This section here is quite horrible if you don't have chain tyres, and there's a massive frozen lake that we're going to see in a minute. Uh, but this is probably the worst map in the Alaska region in my opinion. Um, it isn't the nicest map. The route we're going to be taking is fairly okay. Um, there is one mud bog section which I will show you in a minute when we get to it. Um, but yeah this is not the nicest map. I've rolled quite a lot of trucks on this map sort of off camera so yeah if you're playing around on this map for the first time be warned. Okay, something I am noticing with this vehicle, I've just gone over a couple of rocks and stuff. It Obviously it's a small little scout vehicle, but it does seem very light, which sounds like a curious observation. But that means when you go over rocks and stuff, it seems to like move around a lot more. It's very jumpy, it's not very stable. Whereas some of the bigger scout vehicles like the Yar and the APC, they seem a little bit more planted when you go in over rocks and stuff they don't bounce around as much uh, this thing seems very lively it's very like skippy uh, which means it's a little bit more uncontrollable which is not really what you want when you're traveling over rocks and things um, we're coming up to the nine minute mark on my timer um, this is the one mud section um, not the most horrific mud section, but I don't know how well this thing's going to cope with it. In the load star, I flew through here, I just went straight through the middle. This thing is uh, taking its jolly time with this. Um, we are allowed to go for a winch, so I'm going to go and do that, just to speed us along a little bit. Um, we're allowed to use all of the resources available to us. Okay, on my timer, we're at 10 minutes and uh, 10 and a half minutes. Um, so we're probably coming up to the 10 minute mark now on your timer. Obviously, you will have the accurate one. So we're actually not that far away now, but I don't think we're going to beat the 10 minute mark, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, I did have hopes for this thing, but at the end of the day, we can't have perfect videos all the time so we're going to just see and well we're going to just try and get the quickest time possible in this thing i can confirm that the load star was faster than this so uh we may do an on camera um speed run in the load star of the alaska speed run so we can compare um, but as an official bench time, it will be interesting to see roughly how fast this thing is. So it's not going to beat the 10 minute sort of mark that I'd hoped it would. But I still feel like it can set a pretty good benchmark that the Lodestar can go and beat uh, maybe in the next speed run. Okay, I'm deciding to uh, uh, set a challenge within a challenge. We've got four litres of fuel left. The service hub is literally just around this corner to my left. Can we make it there before we run out of fuel? I think we are going to. This is the service hub right here. We've got three litres left. And there we go, across the line. Um, let me have a look real quick what we are up to here. 
on my timer we're up to 13 and a half minutes you will all have the accurate time below or over there somewhere you, you'll have the accurate time on your screen but yeah it's a shame we couldn't beat the 10 minute uh, sort of threshold that i'd hoped we could um, that was the time to be uh, that's what I did in the load start off camera it will be interesting to see what we can do the load start on camera I might do a speed run of that on camera so if you're interested to see how fast that vehicle is then make sure you subscribe um, but can I recommend the TUS 116 to you well yeah I can actually it's a pretty uh, pretty cool little vehicle um, if you're scouting out some uh, some new terrain, it is very small, which is good for getting into tight places and getting some of those upgrades which are like hidden in the trees. So if you're struggling with that, then maybe give this thing a go. You can actually go and recover this thing for free in the Tamar region in Drownlands, um, which is what I went ahead and do uh, did. Sorry. Um, so even if you're not planning to use this vehicle I'd still recommend you go and recover it because you can sell it for a profit so if you're trying to customize some of your better trucks you can always use the profits um, from this thing to uh, do that as we run out of fuel now um, but yeah it's a pretty capable vehicle not the fastest vehicle in the world um, especially for speed running um, obviously this game is not about speed it's about uh, whether you can actually make it but I enjoy these speed run things it's a challenge for me it's some entertaining for you to watch so that is why we do it um, so this thing will make it to its destination I have no doubt about that but there are better options available uh, that is how I will put it um, but if you haven't got this thing go and get it and try it out and uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this vehicle that is going to do it for today's video thank you all so much for watching hope you did enjoy and um, for the next video make sure you subscribe that is going to do it for today though have a good one and I will see you in the next video